In this video, we're going to be replacing the rear brakes on this 2007 Mazda CX-9. Remove our rear wheel. It's going to be a 21 millimeter. We'll go ahead and take off our lug nuts now. All right, so we're going to remove our caliper now. It's going to be two 14 millimeter bolts, top and bottom. Break those free. Now on the top one here, you will want to be careful of your brake line. So we're going to move over to a deep socket on the top. And the bottom, because of the shock, will be a short socket or a shallow socket. So now our brake line runs up here. We have a really short piece of flexible hose. You want to be careful when removing your caliper that you're not doing any unwanted damage to that. So you can see our caliper is actually pretty well locked onto our brakes. Just try and wiggle it off. If you need to, you can come in from the top or bottom with the flathead screwdriver or pry bar. There you go, remove your caliper. We're actually going to take a caliper hanger Put it through the back of the caliper and hang it up to the bracket that holds our brake line in the back. Not the brake line itself, but the bracket. Keep it out of the way. Now we can remove our brake pads. We're just going to pull them away from the rotor and out. So now behind here we have two more bolts holding in our caliper bracket. They're going to be 17 millimeters, and we're going to use a shallow socket to get both of them removed. Now, when you're undoing your bracket, I like to leave one of these bolts most of the way out, but still on by a couple of threads. It'll hold your bracket in place for you. And now we can remove our caliper bracket. Work your rotor slightly free and then pull it straight away. So now we have our hub face here and our lugs. We're going to clean this up. We're going to come in here with a wire brush and get in behind our lugs. And then if we need to, which we probably will right around this edge, come in with an air tool and just a mild abrasive to get rid of any corrosion. You want this area here almost to look like this, nice and clean and free of any corrosion for your rotor to sit onto. We're going to come back in with our angle tool here with a mild abrasive on it. Don't use any heavy sandpaper. We're not trying to take away metal. Just clean the surface. Now that we've cleaned up our hub, we're just going to finish it with some brake clean. And a quick wipe. Once that dries off, We'll put a nice little coat of anti-seize on that surface. And the anti-seize that we're using is in an aerosol can, so I'm going to block off the potential of spraying onto our pads here. We'll let that dry, and we'll put our rotor up and clean our rotor. So we're going to take our rotor and put it onto the lugs backwards if you want to. Go ahead and put a lug nut on there just to save your feet or toes if that happens to fall. What we're going to do is take some brake clean, clean the surface that's going to make contact with any of our brake items. So the interior where our pads for our shoes or emergency brakes, and the exterior where our pads are going to go. Once we're done with that, 
can take off the lug nut if you decided to use one. Take your rotor, flip it around, and we'll do the same thing on the outside. Sometimes these ship with greases or oils on them, or you've gotten some oils or greases from handling. That's what we're removing now. All right, so now we have our brake caliper bracket. We're gonna go ahead and clean this up, put some new hardware in it, and get it ready to go in the vehicle. First thing we're gonna do is remove our caliper pins. Just gonna pull and twist these. Sometimes you can take the rubbers right off with them. Sometimes you can take the rubber off separate. So you'll see there is a difference between the top and the bottom pin. You want to make sure you put them back in the right locations. Okay, so our rubber here looks like somebody was already in here doing a brake job and lost that rubber and never put one back in there. So unfortunately, we don't have a new one to put back on here. But you would want to make sure yours is still there. So what we're going to do is move along. I'm going to use some brake clean. Clean out these areas here. Try and get rid of any residual old grease. So I'll we'll let those drip drain while we clean the boots. And now we'll clean our caliper pins. So what we're doing here is just removing any old grease. If it seems to be good grease and it's still stuck there, it's okay. We're just looking to get rid of the old worn out grease. All right, while everything over here dries up, we're gonna focus on our bracket. We're gonna remove the old hardware. Get under there with a pick tool or a flathead screwdriver and just pop up your old hardware. You can discard the old hardware. Where our hardware sits, we're gonna come in with a wire brush. We're gonna clean up any loose corrosion on both sides. So you can see the difference. And to finish that off, just give it a little spray with some brake clean. Dry it off with a rag. And now before we put our new hardware in place, we're gonna come in with just a little bit of grease where our new hardware will sit. This will help protect in the future against corrosion. And we'll flip it over, do the same on the other side. Now we're ready to put our new hardware in place. Center that up, push straight down. All right, now as long as where your pins will go is dried out from brake clean, we can start to reinstall our boots. Sometimes here a little flathead or a small pocket screwdriver will help you. Now that your boots are installed, we can take our caliper pins. We're going to put a light coat of grease on our caliper pin. And we're going to put a light coat of grease all the way up until this little rib along the top. This is also going to help protect against moisture and corrosion. I'm going to take that pin put it on the correct side. Locate it in, press all the way in, sealing the boot. If you have any grease, squeeze out along the top. Now's the time to go ahead and clean that up. Give it a couple of runs in and out. Make sure everything works the way it should, moves freely. And move on to the bottom. Now again, for us, we're missing that rubber. 
we're going to continue along. Nice light coat of grease. Nice light coat of grease, little dab on the bottom. Center it up. And push it all the way in. Nice free travel. Now we're ready to take our caliper bracket to the vehicle. Now we can take our caliper bracket, put it in position, and we can start our two bolts. We'll come in and snug these bolts up, and then we'll torque them down. And we're going to torque these caliper bracket bolts down to 60 foot-pounds. All right, so now we're going to install our pads. We'll line up the tabs on the bottom, twist and turn into place. Do the same on the front. So now our piston is out a little bit further than we need it to be to get over our brand new pads with full meat on them. So we need to press our piston back slightly. So we have a piston compression tool here. All right, so now we've got our piston compressed in. Go ahead and release our tool. And we can take our caliper. We're gonna line it up to the pins first and then push in over our pads. Now sometimes your pin needs to be twisted just a little bit to line up with this notch. There we go. Looks good on the bottom. We can put our caliper bolts in place. All right, so we're going to snug these up. And we'll torque these bolts down to 20 foot-pounds. Go ahead and put our wheel back on. And what I'll do here is I'll put a top and a bottom lug nut on and I'll rock the rim back and forth onto that rotor face, try and get it as flush as possible on the back. And then I'll continue with the rest of the lug nuts. Once we have our lug nuts in, we'll come in and snug these down. We'll lower the vehicle on the ground so the wheel won't spin and we'll torque them down. So now with the vehicle on the ground, we're gonna go ahead and torque down our lug nuts. We're gonna do that in a crisscross pattern. We're gonna torque it down to 85 foot pounds. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.